hello guys welcome back to the channel today's video will be on separate so in this video we'll see how to determine when what is meant by subgrade of soils what are the necessary soil investigation to determine the characteristic and load bearing capacity of subgrade soils the necessary laboratory and field tests what are the different types of field compaction equipments what's meant by expansive soil and how to treat expansive soils and a problem related to expansive soil and finally uh, we'll see how to uh, write a geotechnical investigation report and what are the different components of this geotechnical investigation report so uh, i have divided this lecture into a series of five videos so the in the first video we'll see what's meant by subgrade soils and what are the different uh, laboratory tests so what is subgrade subgrade is uh, a supporting ground below uh, a supporting ground of pavement structure it is found immediately below base and sub base courses so as you can see on the picture this represents typical section of a flexible pavement the flexible pavement have a wearing course a base course sub base course this is usually optional a subgrade so this subgrade usually is uh, divided into two if the load bearing capacity of the subgrade is good we can use the natural soil but if it's not we have to use a compacted soil which is called a capping layer a capping layer and this picture represents if you have an axle load or a vehicle's axle load you can see that the load intensity decreases with depth the load intensity decreases with depth and hence you have to determine the characteristics of the subgrade and the performance of the road is usually affected by the load bearing capacity of the subgrade so subgrade should have sufficient strength or load bearing capacity to resist the vehicle load it should show also a smaller deformation which means it should have sufficient strength and stiffness it should also have a drainage properties it should be properly compacted in different layers and it should not be compressible it should not be compressible it should not be compressible so what are the different uh, what are the soil investigation what is meant by soil investigation soil investigation includes identifying the characteristics of the soil we identify what type of soil is dominant in that region as well as what is the shear strength capacity of the soil because soils have soils should have sufficient shear strength to resist the applied load so the phase of soil investigation is divided into five phases we have disk study site reconnaissance soil exploration laboratory and field testing and finally writing a geotechnical investigation report during desk study prior to uh, uh, commencing a site visit by referring different types of topographic and contour maps we can identify the elevation and the land feature of uh, that area we can know what type of terrain we expect is it rolling is it flat area is it escarpment is it mountainous we can also uh, identify the type of soils using geotechnical maps geotechnical maps uh, we can also see whether there is an existing water body using hydrological maps we have to also identify utility lines such as power transmission lines or telecommunication lines prior to investigation once we have determined this this condition and uh, gathered sufficient information we make a site visit to identify access uh, conditions and nearby structures the condition of nearby structures you can see whether there is a previous development or gradation on site where should i come where uh, we can see where the availability of construction materials where the relocation of quarry sites 
We also can identify whether there is a slope stability problem in that area. So if we have identified such conditions, then the next stage will be soil exploration. Soil exploration is determining the characteristics of the soil, either using test pits or boreholes. If the investigation depth is limited to 3 or 4 meters, we can use test pits. But if the investigation depth exceeds that condition, we have to use boreholes or boring. So during the soil exploration, we identify the type of material or type of soil. Is it sand? Is it gravel? Is it cobbles? Is it silt? Is it clay? We can also identify the strata or stratification of different layers. We can also identify the location of groundwater levels. So after soil exploration, we proceed to laboratory and field tests. During laboratory tests, we conduct two tests, identification or characteristic tests such as gradation tests, Atterberg limits, free soil tests. So these tests indicate uh, the types of soils that are encountered to the site. And strength tests such as unconfined compression tests can, can be a tracheal test, a directional test, or if you have in situ field tests like DCP tests or SPT tests, uh, give shear strength parameters of the soil, such as cohesion and angle of internal friction, which are necessary to determine load bearing capacity of the soil. Finally, based on this laboratory test result, we can write a geotechnical report, which includes the results of the laboratory tests and conclusion and any recommendation to mitigate any encountered problems such as uh, close groundwater levels or expansive soils. So what is test pitting and sampling? Test pitting is by excavation a series of test pits we can uh, recover disturbed and undisturbed samples which will be further used to determine the characteristics of uh, the soil. So these test pits may be allocated along the center line or offset from the center line in road construction. So these two types of sampling are disturbed samples and undisturbed samples. What's meant by disturbed samples? Disturbed samples is samples in which the natural structure or mineralogy, mineralogy have been altered by excavation, whereas undisturbed samples are samples in which the natural structure of the soil is not disturbed. Mind you, it is difficult uh, or, or impossible to get 100% undisturbed samples. So the picture on the left represents disturbed samples. So disturbed samples usually are used for classification purposes such as uh, conducting Atterberg limits or free swell tests or a specific gravity test or gradation test. And undisturbed samples are usually uh, used for determining the shear strength parameter or the load bearing resistance of the soil. The undisturbed samples are recovered from the wall of uh, the test pit. As you can see, test pits have many advantages. You can, you can recover both disturbed and undisturbed samples. Further, you can see the stratification of the soil, the strata of the soil. And if there is a presence of groundwater, you can also uh, determine the depth of groundwater. This table shows typical test pit log. You can enter the project name, the client, the consultant, the station, the station where the test pit is uh, excavated, the location of the test pit, eating, northern elevation, date of sampling, depth of the test pit, the position, is it located on the center line or offset from the center line, and you can also uh, specify the type of soil. Okay. The, ne the next important concept is depth of investigation. Depth of investigation. So, what will be the extent of ex 
investigate. So the extent of the investigation should determine the suitability of the subgrade load bearing capacity. The suitability of subgrade load bearing capacity. So you have to identify the zone of design depth. So this design depth is defined as the depth from the finished road level to the depth that the load bearing capacity of the soil has little effect has little effect on the pavement performance. So this depth is usually restricted from 1.5 meter to 3 meter below the pavement surface. So different manual to recover different types of uh, investigation design depths. Uh, for instance, this Tanzanian road design manual recommends a depth of 80 uh, centimeter and 60 centimeter for general requirement. And if you have heavy traffic load, it can uh, extend up to 1.2 meter for paved truck trunk roads, and for other roads, it can be up to one meter. The frequency of investigation. So, how many in number of uh, test pits or boreholes is sufficient. So there's no uh, clear-cut or defined value for the frequency of investigation, but usually if you have uniform soils then the frequency of investigation is smaller or you have to use smaller number of test pits. But if you have encountered in the side erratic type of soils then the frequency of investigation can be uh, up to uh, limited up to 500 meters intervals so with up to 500 meter intervals so for highway pavement these test pits or testing uh, sites are placed within the interval of 100 meter up to 5 kilometers along the center line and uh, offset in both directions so we consider this as center line so offset to the left and offset to the right so, uh, for paved trunk roads, so indicator tests such as uh, gradation and other block limits could be a minimum of 4 per kilometer, strength states is 2 per kilometer for paved road, other paved roads 2 per kilometer, minimum of 1 per kilometer, for gravel roads 2 per kilometer and 1 per kilometer in a string test sorry string test so this is a summary of previous slide so the depth of investigation is usually limited to 1.5 meter and the spacing if you encountered uniform soils it could be up to five kilometer but if you have erratic soils it could be up to 500 meter So what are the different essential laboratory and field tests to evaluate subgrade soils? So these are a summary of tests. You have particle size distribution, Atterberg limits, and linear shrinkage. You have Proctor, California bearing ratio, CBR, in situ field test, DCP, soil classification, and free soil tests. Particle size distribution. Or gradation so the particle size distribution is used to identify what what type of soil is present in that area so we have once uh, the soils could be uh, sorry soils could be either dominantly gravel sand silt or clay so to, to know the proportion percentage of the soil we have to conduct this mechanical uh, uh, particle size distribution process and that's known as particle size distribution during determining uh, the particle size distribution for classifying the soils there are two dominant or uh, mostly used classification system you have unified soil classification system and you have the ASHTO American Association soil uh, state highway and transport officials classification system so the difference between these two classification system is in unifying soil classification system considers a soil to be fine grain soil if more than 50 percent pass the number 200 sieve or are uh, past the 0 0.075 sieve whereas in isto classification system 
it considered fine grain soils if the soils uh, if 35 uh, sorry if 35 percent pass the number uh, 200 thief and when you see the particle size distribution the unified soil classification system considers soils as gravel if the particles greater than 4.75 millimeter whereas in the case of ISO greater than 2 millimeter and there is a difference in the coarse medium and fine sand distribution between unified soil classification and ISO but relatively the, per uh, the particle size of silt and clay is the same both in unified soil classification system and ISO classification system so how can we determine the particle size of a soil? The particle size of the soil is determined using mechanical uh, shaking process known as sieve analysis. So during sieve analysis, you have a different type of sieves. And you pour a sample onto a sieve, a representative sample. And a sieve lid is uh, placed on the top of the last sieve and it is placed on a mechanical shaker so this mechanical shaker is allowed to shake the sample for about 10 minutes and we can uh, obtain a representative sample on each sieve so you can see you have different sieves from sieve number 4 up to sieve 200 which have different opening size and finally we can calculate the percentage retained which will be the mass retained divided by the total mass multiplied by 100 and the percentage final will be 100 percent minus cumulative retain and cumulative retain let's see this with practical example we are given with sieve opening and mass retained on each sieve and you have uh, a total mass of 650 gram we are required to plot the particle size distribution and determine the amount of coarse and fine grain soils using unified soil classification system. So the first step is to construct a table having sieve opening, mass retained, percentage of retained, cumulative retained and percent final. So this information is given in the previous table. To calculate percent retained, percent retained will be mass retained divided by total mass multiplied by 100. And the cumulative retained will be the mass retained on that sieve and the prior sieve. So, for example, for number 4, it will be the mass retained on number 3 over 8 inch plus number 4 sieve. So, it will be 8.2. For number 10, it will be the mass retained on number 10 plus number 4 plus number 3 over 2. And we'll fill the rest using similar fashion so the percentage final will be the percentage final will be 100 percent minus cumulative retain so 100 uh, minus 0 it will be 100 for number 4 it will be 100 minus 8.2 will have 91.8 so in similar manner we'll fill the rest of the values so to plot the particle size distribution curve the particle size are plotted on semi-log paper, semi-log graph, where a particle size on x-axis in log scale and the percentage passing on ordinate scale on the y-axis. So this curve represents the particle size distribution. So percentage of silt and clay will be particles less than 0 0.075, which, be, which will be 15.4 percentage of gravel will be particles greater than 4.75 and hence it will be 100 minus 91.8 percentage of coarse sand is between 4.75 and 2 hence 91.8 minus 80.1 percentage of medium sand from 2 up to 0.425 and hence it will be 80.1 minus 47 and finally for fine sand it will be uh, 0 0.425 and between 0 0.425 and 0 0.075 hence for 7 minus 15.4 so this is how you calculate the percentage of fine grain soils and coarse grain soils